What if you were to find out today that your neighbor you think you know so well actually runs a cartel in secret? What if that same person was instead your classmate you met at school every day? Well, that is exactly the dilemma that the people who knew Maurice O'Shea Salazar had to face. An everyday person on the surface, Maurice O'Shea Salazar hid a deep secret. Unknown to the people around him, he had close ties to one of the largest drug cartels in the world, blood ties. In today's video, we will talk about the life and crimes of Mexican Maurice O'Shea Salazar, following his rise to infamy and his downfall. Be sure to stick around till the very end so you don't miss out on anything important. With that out of the way, let's dive right in. Maurice O'Shea Salazar had a pretty tough childhood. In 2005, his father passed away when Maurice was just a teen. Soon after, Maurice and his family decided to move to Kiloglin, a town in Ireland, since that's where many of his father's relatives lived. This was a fresh start for the bereaved family consisting of Maurice, his sister, and his mother. And true enough, they settled in pretty well in the neighborhood, but little did anyone know at the time that Maurice O'Shea Salazar would actually become such a notorious criminal in the coming years. It is not like Maurice suddenly adopted the criminal lifestyle either. Turns out he showed signs of being a bad apple right from his school days. But back then, no one really took notice. Maurice had a pretty violent personality, even as a kid. He would threaten his classmates with an interesting claim. He would say that he had ties to the cartel back in Mexico. His classmates obviously took that claim as wishful thinking and lies. Stick around till the end to find out if they were really lies. Morris was a bully during his school years. As a matter of fact, he attacked a fellow classmate on his very first day of school. When his teacher was looking somewhere else, he turned to the classmate he was angry with and grabbed his head. He then proceeds to try and slam the kid's head into a table. This bullying behavior would continue during the time Morris attended school. It was also during this time that Morris got the nickname Mexican, a name that sticks with him to this day. The violent tendencies that Morris displayed did not stop, however. They instead escalated as he entered his teen years. During his teen years, Morris got in all kinds of trouble. He stole and carried firearms. He racked up quite a lot of charges over time. Eventually, he had to appear in court for a total of 14 offenses. This included theft, criminal damage, and not complying with the Garde. Morris pled guilty, but at the time he was too young, so he only got one month in prison for his crimes. On top of that, he was placed under a strict curfew of 12 hours. Additionally, he was charged a 1,000 euro fine. In all honesty, this was a second chance for Morris to build his life anew, as he pretty much got away scot-free from his illegal activities. But all this did little to deter him from a life of crime. Perhaps he couldn't let go of the criminal lifestyle because of the pride he had in his ties to the cartel, a claim he had made and boasted about as early as his school years. But was there any truth to this claim? Turns out, yes, there is. Morris is not linked to just any cartel. He has blood ties to the Sinaloa cartel. The Sinaloa cartel is perhaps the largest gang trafficking organization in the world right now. The leader of this cartel was a feared Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, until he was arrested. How is Morris related to El Chapo? El Chapo's first wife, Maria Alejandrina Salazar Hernandez, was a cousin of Morris's mother. This puts him in pretty close proximity to the very top brass of the Sinaloa cartel. This was the basis on which Morris based his claim of being tied to the cartel as a kid. A pretty dangerous bloodline, no doubt. But this relationship with one of the most dangerous criminals in the world is not the only thing that led to Morris becoming so infamous. But it was a daring feat that made him a wanted man. This daring feat we are talking about is nothing less than establishing a full-on cartel cell in Chile. At least, he tried to. In 2020, Yolanda Salazar Tariba and Ricardo Salazar Tariba arrived in Chile. Yolanda is Morris's mother, while Ricardo is his uncle. Their purpose for coming to Chile was to make arrangements so shipments of cocaine could be received from Bolivia. Once they had arrived, the shipment could be forwarded to another country, such as Spain, Belgium or the Netherlands. 
As you can guess, this whole operation was directed by Maurice O'Shea Salazar, who was currently living in Spain. To send your own mother to manage the smuggling of drugs, what a family. From the looks of it, the operation was going well, except for one huge problem. The Salazar Tariba family failed to notice. Turns out, the DEA had caught the scent of this illegal operation, so they tipped off the Chilean civil police about the whole thing. The Chilean civil police then infiltrated the whole operation undercover, and that's where it all came tumbling down. Ricardo Salazar Tariba was really careful using false identities during his stay in Chile for over a year. One problem though, the Chilean police took hundreds of photos, videos, and even wiretaps of him as evidence while he was going about arranging for the drug route to be established. Then, when it came time to ship the actual drugs, the police sent a fake shipment while documenting everything to figure out how the cartel was operating. After that, the authorities searched the container in Europe containing the drugs and cracked down on the Sinaloa cartel members trying to establish the drug trade network. Yolanda Salazar Tariba and Ricardo Salazar Tariba were captured as they tried to flee. Morris was luckier than his mother and uncle. He couldn't be captured in Spain, even though the Chilean authorities were working alongside the Spanish Civil Guard. Despite having escaped the arrest, Morris knew that he would be caught in Spain sooner or later. It was only a matter of time. So he quickly fled to Mexico, where it would be more difficult to arrest him. And that's where he has stayed till now. For the longest time, Morris has been out of reach of the law as long as he stays in Mexico. But that may be about to change. Chilean authorities want to extradite Morris from Mexico, but that has proven difficult up until now. Recently though, a court in Chile accepted the request of the authorities for the extradition. The charges brought up against Morris are illicit drug trafficking and illicit association. If this extradition ends up being successful, Morris could finally face justice for the crimes he has committed. Now, it is important to understand the gravity of the situation. Drugs are not illegal for no reason. They take lives in masses and destroy families. What Morris had set out to do under the guidance of the Sinaloa cartel was to create a cell from which this death-dealing substance could be dealt out to the world. If the Chilean police and the DEA had not caught up to the cartel and put a stop to this operation, who knows how many would have died. With such a heinous crime to his name, Mexico Morris is a priority target for the authorities, especially for Chile, which is trying to stop being a key trade route for drugs. What drives the authorities to arrest and prosecute Morris is his ties to the Sinaloa cartel. The Sinaloa cartel, in turn, has ties to the Kinahan cartel, another infamous cartel that is involved in drugs. With all this in perspective, Morris O'Shea Salazar emerges as a key figure in the global drug trade. Hopefully, the Chilean authorities will be able to capture Morris and end the potential danger he can unleash in the future. That's about it for this video discussing all there is to know about Mexican Morris O'Shea Salazar. Do let us know in the comments section what you thought of this dangerous criminal and a leader in the Sinaloa cartel. Would you like to see more stories like his in the future? Be sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. Until next time.